Snooper Thursday! Woo! Woo! And uh, this week we're going to go to Crooked Stave. Colorado. Because yep. that which is crooked cannot be made straight. <laughs> That's a Bible reference. He speaks from experience. Yes. That's um, weird. So I'm going to let you guys yeah. talk about this while I deal with the wax. Um, so yeah, I recently got a bunch of uh, Crooked Stave beer. I'm a member of their Solar Reserve thing. It's on the back. Someone is Crooked Stave swagged out right now. Yeah. Which I, somebody's got a Crooked Stave hard on. Well, I just got all this stuff. Like my buddy uh, Scott in Denver has been holding on to this stuff for me for two years now. So uh, he just shipped it, and now we have massive Cricket Stave. So we're doing... I'm um, very excited about. Yeah, this is batch one. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it's called. Matt? Um, it? it's, called, it's called batch one. It's Wild Wild Brett. Um, Come this, on, Steve. Dude, seriously? You shut up. I thought you were a professional. I will, I will kick you in the ass. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that. Hey, there you go. Um, yeah, this is this is batch number one, is what it is. It's um, it wild was, wild Brett. Wild wild Brett. Yeah, it so was, 2010. Um, yeah, it was actually just recently released, um, but it was originally brewed in 2010. This is part of um, their Origins series, which is like beers that they've been hanging on to for a really long time. Which and I feel like um, a fancy getting, like Real Housewife of Orange I County love with this, thing. this glass. Yeah, we're also sporting glass. our Crooked Steve glassware. Yeah. If you ever see people drinking out of glasses like this, it's not that they're trying to be pretentious. I mean, it might be, but for the most part, it's not. Glasses like this exist because they create so much aroma, and mm. it's just so amazing to yeah. smell this beer out of this glass right yeah. now. Essentially, when you have a big, broad glass like this, it creates a lot of surface area at the top, but then it um, gets more narrow at the top, which concentrates all the aromas. This is a, basically a giant aroma machine. And your taste is mostly aroma. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So. It's like, what, 80% or something like yeah. that? Is Retro nasal. I think still my favorite thing in the beer industry is hearing Chad say Britannomyces. Mm -hmm. When he says that word, it's it sends tingles down my spine. It does. Yeah, it's tingling. I, um, just it's, it smells very nice. Yeah. You know. God, no. This is it's got so much of that nice fruit. Like it's jammy. It's jammy, but it's not overwhelming. The fruit characteristics really are where they need to Ooh. be. Um, nice and subtle, just a hint of sweetness. The tart really get, plays through with yeah, the botanomyces. Nice, nice, nice light of tartness, a little bit of funk. I think this is very well balanced for what it is. It's got a nice tartness to it. The mouthfeel on it is very soft. It's um, got like a nice earthy character to it too. Yeah. It's got enough acidity to kind of scrub your tongue. The, the carbonation is perfect on it. But it's not like like really excessively sour, which considering its age is nice because a lot of times if you have... Um, Beers like this, they can tend to get a little bit on the acetic side, but this is, has the a longer really nice, they sit in the yeah. bottle. You're saying, yeah, yeah. Um, but this or in, in the barrel too with oxygen exposure. But um, this is, I mean, it's freaking Chad. I mean, Chad, he knows what he's doing, and they agree. actually, he, they are now, um, they just opened their own actual brewery because the last time we saw Chad, which was. Um, at not the past GABF, but the one before, um, they had the barrel house where they were actually bringing wort in and fermenting it themselves. Now they're actually going to be brewing themselves. I feel like we need to go and and do a show at the brewery because we've kind of Chad is one of those brewers that we've sort of followed from the very beginning. You kind of like check back in when with he them. was yeah back when he oh, was a gypsy while, yeah. brewer. We I had I. Talked to him at uh, the Nebraska Beer Festival. Well, we did a show with him when he was brewing at Funkworks. Yep. Right. So, and then so. when he got into Funkworks, we did the show, and then it was like at the our, the at the Barrel House, and now that he's got the brewery. Like, we need to go and do the trifecta. Absolutely. We didn't do a show there this year because um, this year I think he was really tied up with uh, the what the funk mm -hmm. thing that they did. Um, so maybe next year, you know, we'll we'll get down there. So well, we didn't really do that many brewery shows this year at JBF. It was sort of a real relaxed. JBF for us, so. Yeah, what's that like? It was fun. I didn't know. Yeah, because you didn't go. It's not our fault. It wasn't our fault. We should go off to a master pairings. Yes. All so right. I can wallow in my sadness. Sad panda. Hey everyone, welcome to another Master Pairing. I'm your host, Bill Sysak. Today I finally have Denise Ratfield on from Stone Brewing Company. Hey Denise, uh, you want to tell everybody what you do at Stone? I'm currently the headquarters receptionist for Stone Brewing Company. Very cool. Now, 
I understand that you were involved in the Pink Boots Society. I am and, indeed. And what exactly do you do for them other than be a, a Avent supporter? I am the social media committee chairwoman for Pink Boots Society. Nice. So Twitter, I take it? Twitter, Pink Boots Beer. That's okay. who we are, Pink Boots Beer. So, and then you uh, have your own Twitter handle? I do. It's Denise Rat. Denise Rat. Very cool. Now, uh, so I've known Denise. You came onto Stone, what, four years ago? Three and a half years ago? Yes, I missed uh, my vertical hire date by one day. I was nice. uh, hired 09, 08, 09. Nice, very yeah. cool. Um, so Denise has been around the beer scene for a while, though. You used to work at Sierra Nevada all the way back to 95, right? 1995, yeah. I worked yeah. there for seven years. And what did you do there? I worked on their battle, bottling line in the packaging department. Very and cool. uh, upon leaving, I ran, ran the uh, bottling line. Wow, that's pretty cool. I mean... Yeah. With a nice new, it, brand it, new Crohn's machine. Anybody that's seen... Uh, Sierra Nevada knows that that's a, that's a big job, so very big cool. Job. So anyways, thanks for being on. You're welcome. Uh, today I have a fabulous beer. It's Ritual Hop-O-Matic, and uh, let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Dank is a good word for this, and citrus. It's an IPA, 7.1%. When I taste it, I get Wrigley's Juicy Fruit Gum. Now that may sound off, but it's just so palate encompassing with the hops and the malt bill that it's so round. It's not, sometimes it, and it's got this nice hint of sweetness. It's a lot of big uh, double IPAs have it when they have the fusel alcohol notes and they go really sweet. But this at 7.1% is a great alcohol level for uh, a good IPA. And then this is an exceptional IPA because it's got those cool flavors. What do you think of it? Uh, yeah, when I hear Juicy Fruit, I, for me, it's always Chermoya, which is no. very similar to me, but yes. I can see that. Juicy Fruit. Um, but yeah, it's got this dank smell, and, and it's got this rich hop profile, and beautiful citrus notes. Today, today I'm pairing it with a uh, Rogue Chocolate Cheddar Cheese. Uh, sounds kind of odd, chocolate cheddar, doesn't look chocolatey. They actually add Rogue Creamery and Rogue Brewery got together and they actually do uh, chocolate stout in this cheddar cheese. So it's gonna have some coffee and chocolate notes which would make most people go, oh, well I should do a stout or a porter with it. Mm -hmm. But because of the fruity balance of this and, and, and the overall palate mouthfeel, I think it's gonna go really well and it's gonna play off that coffee and espresso. So please help yourself. Cheddars are great. A lot of times they're with IPAs, especially aged cheddars. I like them with stouts normally. Creamy, I see where they're going. There's this bitterness on the front that comes from the stout being infused in there. Chocolate notes, nice. All over the palate. Really brings out the fruit and the citrus. You really get this big hit of um, kind of like Valencia orange come in, and then the, the the chocolate notes, and you start to get this almost, not a bitter chocolate, almost like a milk chocolate comes across. This is great. Yeah, it really rounds off. What do you think, so you like it? Yeah, I'm going in again. So tell everybody, you know, we have a lot of viewers, a lot of craft savvy uh, viewers, a lot of foodies. Mm -hmm. um, tell everybody about the Pink Boots Society a little bit because a lot of people are like, Pink Boots Society, what's what is that? that? Yeah, exactly. Even people within the industry, what is that? I don't know what that is. Um, Terry Ferendorf started that uh, many years ago and uh, it's basically an organization for women within the brewing community to educate, to promote, and we're big enough now, uh, we're... We're giving women within our organization scholarships to further their careers. Awesome. Yeah, women that are not beer professionals, that know of the Pink Boot Society, we got so popular that we actually have another chapter called Barley's Angels. Oh, nice. And those are for women who are not making a living in the brewing industry, but still want the education, the participation. And support. And to feel, absolutely, and to feel like they are part of a brewing community. That's awesome. Denise. Yeah. Um, so this pairing, I know we've been talking about uh, Pink Boot Society, but it's an important cause, an important uh, part of the beer community. Cheese is great on its own. The beer is great, and I think the beer really elevates the cheese. I love this beer, but I also think it's great as you um, try it with the cheese. It brings out some new nuances that I don't normally pick up in the beer. More of the citrus, like I said. 
but the cheese I'm really enjoying. I think this cheese could be great on a lot of things. I'd like to try this on a, a grilled cheese sandwich, actually. I was thinking the same thing. You could do this, and then I would go, because of the fact that the grilled cheese with the butter and the browning of the toasting of the bread would go with the porter. So it just shows you that cheeses like this are so versatile along with craft beer. So having it plain, I see it with this. Having a grilled cheese sandwich, I see it with a great porter. You could take this and make a bechamel sauce or uh, you know, even an Alfredo sauce with pasta and then all of a sudden you're doing it with the Belgian triple and you're pulling still the chocolate notes throughout all these different variations of the uh, cheese, but it will allow for a lot of different beers. So remember, it's not just the um, product itself, it's trying them in different components and with different uh, accoutrements, let's call it. And, it'll, and so it'll give you a wider range of beers because once again, beer is the most versatile beverage to pair with in the world. So thanks for watching another Master Pairing, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Denise. Welcome back. And uh, so as always, we're going to talk about our anniversary party a little bit more. As always, because as we, always, always, we always this Saturday. Have this Saturday. Um, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, if you've never been there, it's a massive, massive, massive bottle share. Um, we do it Dr. Bill style, where basically me, Steve, maybe Matt, whoever, Dr. Bill, and Baby Bill, Bill. <laughs> um, and other helpers, yeah, stand behind a table and we open beers kind of every two minutes or something. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty That's how much fun. beer it's there rapid, is, and yeah. it goes on for an hour or two. Yeah, I think so. last year we we had about 180 people and we poured out about. 300 and 400 bottles of beer. Yeah. It was pretty insane. Yeah, last year was pretty intense. Um, but what we didn't Somebody have... Somebody went missing. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, you know. <laughs> what, uh, but what, what we didn't have last year that we have this year is a collaboration beer with Iron Fire Brewing Company. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, our, our collaboration beer has been with Beachwood. They did it two years in a row. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the, the Alpha, 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 Alpha Supreme, Alpha which is a rye with... Uh, Red Palo. Nelson. Nelson. Nelson, yeah. yeah. Um, but this year, since we're out in the IE, we just, you know, iron yeah, fire. Yeah, I want to do an IE brewery. Awesome. We, did, we did like a kind of a black, uh, hoppy Belgian ale. It was like four or five different styles of beer that we kind of smashed together. It it's basically awesome. what happens when you have four people designing a recipe. Yeah. yeah. You got four but, different beers. Yeah, one. exactly. <laughs> but um, and we've, this been, we've been in touch with the... John. It's supposed to, he said it's turned out really yeah. well, so we're excited. Well, and this will be the only place you get to try it. Mm -hmm. So, because it's not going to be something they market or have on tap or whatever. I think it's pretty much just for us. So. Yet. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. See. We don't, um, we don't, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Also, coming up soon um, is on Fe in, in February is the Pliny the Younger um, Beachwood event that we always Pliny do every year. Pliny Fights Cancer. Pliny mm -hmm. Fights Cancer. I believe it's on the 24th. 24th, yes, to Monday. Um, unfortunately, this year it's not on President's Day, so I have to actually take a day off for it. Yeah, I'm going to have to take a day off, yeah. too. Um, but it's a great event. They raise a lot of money for the Melanoma Cancer Research Center in honor of tar uh, Tony Carboni, who was a uh, school teacher, died at the age of 34. Um, melanoma. Of, of melanoma. Cancer. Uh, last year, I think we raised $9,000. They sold 1,800 tickets, so it's fantastic. And so you buy as many tickets as you want. Yeah, tickets um, go on sale January 14th. At which was Gulf. two days ago. Yeah, they're already on sale, yeah. so jump on it. They go on sale at the uh, Seal Beach location and the Long Beach location. You can buy as many as you want. It's a good excuse to go in and have a pipe. Yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, as if you need one. <laughs> um, the drawing is... They're actually closed on that Monday. They're closed Mondays, period. So... Um, you can't actually attend the drawing, but we'll have it live um, on one of our things. Maybe, maybe Google Plus this year. I'm trying to get that to work. He'll properly. figure that out. It'll be streaming. Um, um, that, the last couple of years have been. It'll also be. There'll, there'll also be like a recorded version if you want to watch it later. Because yeah. we we. And if we you don't watch, if you don't watch the recorded version, or you don't watch the live uh, thing, they they. As we're filming, they make a PDF and they post it on their website. Yeah, so you'll, you'll, you'll figure if, it out. If, too. If, if you win a pipe. You the know. nice thing about it, and the reason why I think it's probably one of the best ways to do it, is you're 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 supporting a great cause, and you're also um, once you win a pint, you are free to come in and drink it whenever the hell you feel like it. So you can come in and have there, a nice there, relaxing I, dinner. I don't know the actual date. Have a pint. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a, within, there's, within a, a, there's a window frame. of time that you yeah. have to drink it because it has to be drunk fast. Um, but it's not like you have to go there at eight in the morning and stand in line for five hours to, to get maybe like four get, ounces. Yeah. yeah, to maybe get a shot of it tossed in your mouth as they're moving the keg to a different room. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's a fantastic way to enjoy it. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, we have some other events coming up that we'll be talking about soon. And uh, until next week, stay safe and drink beer. Cheers, Cheers. Cook safe, Chad. I think we should all wear the same clothes next week. <laughs>